coffee time here at Camp Macetators as we watch the morning toes go by. I know I say every night out here how like, hot, miserable, and humid it is, but last night it was really, really bad. And of course, with the mosquitoes, we can't leave the tent open. And you, I never realized quite how much the mesh cuts the breeze down. Most of the time in the mountains, etc., I am uh, happy for that because it's cold, particularly early in the morning. And the times when I'm out and it's really hot, I tend to be more prone to cowboy camping. The uh, mosquitoes here are uh, enough where that has not been a good option. But hey, if you're not uh, soggy and covered in sand grit, are you really even having fun? Right, Blondie? She'll, she'll be talking in another two hours, don't worry. Today is Baton Rouge Day. That should be all sorts of exciting. We have the number to call to warn them we are going through. We are going to be paying as much attention as we possibly can. And yeah, so we got about 10 miles, we think, till it uh, starts to get interesting. Forecast is actually that it's going to be sunny and humid today, which can't be good. Yesterday was partially cloudy and we actually had one of the rare days where we didn't feel the need to take a stop. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of days we haven't taken a stop, but we did feel the need to take a stop, at least I did. Worst part of the humidity is actually, we can't get the sand grit off of us, so in addition to being sticky, there's a certain grittiness and we're having a hell of a time with uh, chafing and other things. And we are off for what is sure to be an interesting day. So as you can see, there is current. It is enough to help us out with the wind, but we have been missing those uh, days post Missouri confluence. I actually saw something by Dale Sanders who had done it twice, once in high water and once in low. And he was saying that in high water, they were able to get nine or 10 miles an hour sometimes, whereas they were uh, capping out closer to like five or six down here um, with low water, which that, that's basically what we've seen. And he also agreed, per that interview, that uh, canoes are uh, harder than kayaks because they don't really cut through the water as much. So it's not that we're slow, it's just that we're in a canoe. Ugh, that sun is... Uh... <laughs> so we're about five miles out from Baton Rouge. We're about to call the uh, fleet number and see if we can get uh, them aware that we're going through today. So we just called fleet operations. We are now on channel 67 for uh, this little bit. Uh, the guy um, <laughs> was not overly encouraging in tone. Eight o'clock and the sun has just been completely brutal. So once again, we are basically really hoping those uh, clouds come over to play. Taters is a bit weird and doesn't do this, but I constantly narrate my life in my head like it was an episode of like Unsolved Mysteries or something. So clouds come in very happy and then it's like, the young couple was happy when they saw the clouds coming in and then it all went bad. If I say those out loud, I get glared at, which is a shame because here I was thinking that guy you disapproved of that's always sitting behind me was uh, incarcerated in Angola. The one thing I forgot to do is I was going to tell the fleet guy that our call sign is actually the SS Orphans and Puppies, because who's going to run over a boat filled with orphans and puppies? We are assuming that those barges are supposed to be venting like that, whatever that is. And welcome to downtown Baton Rouge-ish. And that ship is one we've been watching, really, really hoping they're not gonna take off. They should know we're around. You exercise on a toe? Jump rope on the back, apparently. <laughs> huh. 
we did have people on the port back there talking about us on 67 and some guys like ran out to the end and going like that towards us. I assume it's a supportive, not what are you doing? They were just saying wow, I think. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the tone of the radio is there are some crazy kayakers down there. Anybody want to go see before they uh, meet their untimely end? We have just been getting smacked all over the place here. <laughs> we have a bit of a headwind going on. Well, that was certainly fun. <laughs> that was the record for both the uh, biggest amount of water total gotten in the boat and the most amount in uh, one little like wave crest. And we got, still got wing dams here and there. Once we got around the first bend, things got quiet. Though we are officially now in uh, Cancer Alley, I believe. <laughs> we actually have an ocean-going vessel uh, sneaking up behind us here. He is also uh, really flying. We're at about mile 210 or so, and it's been kind of just more of the same. There's factories off to the side, but there's still just, you know, trees and options to camp and uh, lots of barges around, but um, kind of just more of the same. This is really worth remembering because this is the first time since, I don't know, Cape G, we've actually been able to do a back channel. <laughs> that That is a little island on the uh, Google map. All this is usually underwater and there are barges on this side. Now they've moved the channel to the other side, obviously, because everything's so shallow. We had somebody who was giving us tips on uh, how to set up camp, looking for places where the barges were parked. And that's really not our concern here, because again, just such low water, the barges can't get uh, anywhere near the shore in a lot of places. We have had buku campsites. Well, there's a blast from the past. We got mayflies here. Dead mayflies, and not in the numbers that we've seen before. We saw a couple of them land on us. <laughs> kind of wondering if we're actually seeing the exposed pipeline here. I'm sure that's fine. What was this area called again, Jen? Cancer Alley? So the Gatorfield Swamp didn't stop the beach parties, and it appears that the uh, Plaque Mine Industrial Runoff also does not stop the beach parties. We're just working around the point across from Plaque Mine. So in cases like this, we try and stay far enough out uh, where we're not going to have anybody pop around and surprise us or them. And we try and make sure that the windows of the toes are able to see us wherever we are. like that might be an actual toe. We're having to be really selective in our crossings here, especially because it takes a little while. So the interesting thing, we've been passed by one of those and by one of those tugs, and the tug had the bigger wake. Granted, I'm pretty sure he wasn't going full speed. That actually made us pay attention, and I was uh, bummed I didn't have the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald tuned up. <laughs> Just come on by on two, and I'll hold her up high, and uh, we'll make something happen. That way you can make that sweep there. So. Down there, though. All right, sounds great. So, if you're wondering where people camp down here in Cancer Alley, as the kids are calling it, there have been options here and there. It is going to be a little loud, but we got an island that we're going to aim for around Point Claire. We were aiming for an island, but we found a remote little beach on Point Claire. And uh, considering the headwind we're going into, and the fact it's seven o'clock, we made our daily, we're ready to stop. This was a uh, harder day of paddling, especially going against all the headwinds through Baton Rouge. We were uh, fighting for every uh, inch for a while there. Today was an interesting day, as expected. Went through Baton Rouge, saw a lot of fleeted barges, Saw a couple ocean-going vessels, oil tankers, I think, so that was cool and different. Heard some entertaining radio chatter. Saw a few power plants and chemical factories off to the side. So yeah, so far I would uh, confirm what pretty much everyone told us before we did this, which is that the Jabalaya exit is the superior exit to this river uh, versus this lake. But definitely a unique and memorable experience to have and after all that we still were able to just pull our boat up and have a private beach camp 
to ourselves. There's a sugarcane field back behind me somewhere, but thanks to a little quarter of wilderness, we still feel like we got a five-star camp. Home sweet home for the night. So we got a cruise ship, a uh, tow with a large barge fleet, and one of those uh, ocean-going vessels. All right on top of each other. There must be all sorts of fun going on in the radio. And look who came for dinner. The boat. <laughs>